Hi, everyone. I'm Jamie Vaughn with Family Fiction's Christian Fiction Bookshelf Podcast. On today's episode of the Christian Fiction Bookshelf Podcast, we have Tosca Lee, who's here to talk to us about her brand new book called The Long March Home from Ravel. How are you today? Doing great. Thank you. Good. So now you co-authored this book, correct? I did. I uh, co-authored this with my friend Marcus Brotherton. Mm -hmm. And Marcus is probably best known for his World War II nonfiction and biographies and his books with celebrities like Gary Sinise. Oh, he wrote wow. Great American with him. And um, but he he also had another novel called Feast for Thieves that won a Christie Award several years ago. And I endorsed that book, and that's how we became friends. Okay. So how did the partnership come about to write the book? So about Six years ago, Marcus called me up and he said, I've been working on this back burner project. It was, he was doing it on spec. It wasn't contracted. Uh, he had started this book based on a conversation. One of the, the veterans from Voices of the Pacific, another project of his had, had said about the soldiers who were in the Philippines during World War II and, and how hard they had had it and, and how, what a terrible time it was. And Marcus what became intrigued and started doing some research. And so he was working on that for seven years wow. and on his own. And so six years ago, he called me up and he said, Hey, listen, I've had this project. I've got a manuscript. I feel like it's good, but I think it could be better. Um, would you come join me? Mm -hmm. And I, I said, well, you know, this is about the Bataan death March. This is the Pacific theater theater in world war II. I've written books about Judas Iscariot that happened 2,000 years ago, the Queen of Sheba 3,000 years ago, but nothing this recent. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't heard of this chapter of World War II history. Uh, so he told me a little bit. I said, this sounds like an important story. Let's do it. So I jumped in and added five years to the process. <laughs> so we, we sold it just over a year ago, but it was 12 years in the making, this book. Yeah. So everyone, it goes to show the creative process sometimes can take time and it's okay. Right. Patience. Yeah. So what can you tell me about the long March home? So this is a story about three best friends. The main character's name is Jimmy Propfield. He is a pastor's son. Uh, he and his best friends live in Mobile, Alabama. And so it's Jimmy, Hank Wright, Billy Crockett. And the fourth best friend is Billy his older sister, Claire, who Jimmy has known his entire life. She will become the love interest. And so we have a dual timeline in the story, which starts with them in the Philippines, right before the start of the events of Pearl Harbor. And what I did not know when I told Marcus, yeah, let's, let's dive in and do this. Uh, and I learned through the research process is that the Philippines was plunged into war within hours of the bombing on Pearl Harbor. Oh, wow. And so know. this war took four months and culminated in April of 1942. And then some 70,000 allied forces, so mostly 60,000 Filipino, about 10,000 American soldiers that were in that surrender were marched 60 miles north out of the Bataan Peninsula to a POW camp. And that's what became known as the Bataan Death March. So this is their story. This is the story of them being stationed there fighting there, being part of the surrender, the march. And the unfortunate thing historically and for them is that as soon as the march is over, it's only the beginning of what is going to be almost four years of POW life. And so that is the story. We have a dual timeline. So every now and then we go back in history to the 30s to watch these friends grow up, to see what created the bonds between them and to see what, what made them like brothers and these are the memories that are going to sustain Jimmy through the tough, terrible years to come. So after they get to the death, they've done the death march the right. death camp, they're all going to have to make sacrifices to survive. Yes. What can you yes. tell us about that without giving away too much? Without giving away too much, there's um, this is the whole story is a story about sacrifice and it's a story about going through that that period when you think you everything is black and white and then entering this fog of war where 
everything becomes gray and the question becomes what is the right thing to do would you go this extra mile for a friend would you lay down your life for a friend how far would you go to save the life of a friend um it historically speaking the survivors of the death march and the pow camps uh, have said many times that having a friend was the difference between surviving and not surviving and so friendship is so important um, at the end of the day, though, this is not just a story about sacrifice. It's a story about redemption, a story about homecoming and um, and brotherhood. Mm -hmm. So Jimmy has assigned all of these awful tasks that he has to yeah. do and it really rips away his pride and his dignity yeah. he has to learn how to overcome them. How can we apply those lessons to our lives? Oh, that's such a great question. I think that at the end of the day, we often think that we are one person and find out that we are another. Mm -hmm. And that is every good story is the story of identity. It's the journey of finding out who you really are. Um, in Jimmy's case, it's the story of finding out that all the things he thought made him a good person mm -hmm. were not the things that made him a good person. Um, so it's moving from this idea of works based mentality to this idea of grace and I think that as far as our own lives go, there comes a point when you strive and you strive and you strive and you have to let go and you have to say, I've reached the end of what I am capable of doing. Um, I surrender the rest. Mm -hmm. And that's really hard for a lot of us to do because we have, especially in America, we've been trained to have that five year or that 10 year, that 20 year plan. I no longer have that because it can get blown up in a second. Um, so <laughs> that is the truth. Yeah, isn't it? And, you know, and you're like, okay, all right, God, where are we going next? You know, how, how do I figure out this next problem? And so, yeah. so this isn't a type of story that you would normally write, but no. what type of research did you have to do? I know that, that your co-writer has done a ton of it, but what did you have to do to be able to put yourself in that story and write these characters? I had to start at the beginning. I, and, really research the Pacific theater, research what was going on specifically in the Philippines. And then to write a story like this, you have to drill down into so much. I mean, part of the story happens in Mobile, Alabama. So there's a lot there um, to, to learn about. Thank goodness for uh, wonderful sources that helped me uh, with that, locals there who helped me. Um, but also in the Philippines, everything from little details about the, the war mm -hmm. uh, to what people were eating. I mean, the flowers, the smells. Um, so it was a, it was a lot of research. It was, it was a whole education for me. Um, and a big part of that and a, a very tough part of the research was reading the survivor accounts. Mm -hmm. And many of these survivors never talked about their experiences until much later in life. And then when they did, they recalled them with such vivid detail, a remarkable detail. Um, and it's hard to read because these are, it's horrific. What they, I mean, no person should be able to survive what they survived. And there are many of those survivors who, who said, because of my faith, because of my friendships, because, and, and it's just remarkable to read. Mm -hmm. So when the reader gets to the last chapter, closes the book, what do you hope that they take away from this story? Mm, well, a few different things. I always hope that a reader takes away a, a, an enriching and inspiring experience. I hope they feel that it was time well spent and that it was a good read. Because let's face it, if we only wanted to learn, we'd be reading nonfiction, right? And that's the difference. In nonfiction, you read about it, it's like seeing it on a screen, but when you're when you are in a, a fictionalized story, a novel, it's like being in one of those um, vehicles in Disneyland going through the ride. I mean, you are a part of it, you're immersed in it. I hope also that readers take away a special appreciation and a, maybe a new understanding or perhaps new knowledge if they didn't know about this part of history before um, and a new appreciation for all the sacrifices that were given by these heroes. Well, I cannot wait to see what God does with this book in the near future. And everyone, it's out now called The Long March Home, and it's from Ravel. Get it at your local Christian bookstore or wherever you buy books. And Tosca, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thank you so much for having me. It was a real pleasure. Thank you.